Did you know there were more knife fighters in the Wild West than there were ever gun fighters? Cheaper. Makes sense. Guns are expensive. You know what else was real expensive? Bullets. Bullets? Horses. Do we see westerns where there's a lot of camels in the Wild West? No. <laughs> no, no. There was. There was a bunch of them. Some of them even broke out and got feral. There's been mythology brought up about these monsters in the Old West. How about sagebrush when it blows across the street? Do you know when that came about? Oh, double woods, yeah. <laughs> um, Hollywood. Hollywood. Look it up. It's like. Leprechauns dress in green. No, not until Walt Disney said they did. Thank you, Darby O'Gill, because they tried to dress up the leprechauns in their normal gray and brown, but Walt Disney says, that looks horrible. Put them in green. And everybody thinks leprechauns dress in green from then on. And they don't, because I've seen a few. When you were so I, I may have been in my cups a wee bit. <clears throat> what other mythology? There's plenty of mythology. When was the Constitution signed? What day? Sometime. It wasn't a day. <laughs> but we have a picture of all these guys. It's a picture! Well, it's a drawn picture. <laughs> but all the guys are signing it. No. It took months. <laughs> okay. And then what happened shortly after that? They needed amendments. Not amendments. Yeah, they, they needed to change it. <laughs> well, you can't change the Constitution. There are amendments in it! <laughs> For God's sakes! Where's your mythology about that? We believe a lot of stupid stuff. We really do. And it makes our soil unavailable for new seeds to come in and grow fruit from. And it's not maybe something that we're doing on purpose. I don't think we plan on, I'm going to get up and be really stupid today. No. I had a boss who had the best, one of the best days of the week. When I called in to work, I'm not coming in, Bob, I'm too stupid to work. And he said, there was silence for about 10 seconds. He said, what? I said, I'm too stupid to work. Everything I've tried to do today, I have absolutely screwed up. And i got to work with machines. I don't want, can, they can be dangerous machines too. I'm going to screw, I just get the feeling I'm going to really goof something up. And I'm not coming into work tonight. Well, and then he starts laughing. And then he goes, well, Davey, he goes, I wish people were as honest as you are. <laughs> You got the night off with my blessing, buddy. We'll see you tomorrow. But we better see you tomorrow, right? Be here all the earlier the next morning. Screw you. I don't know is a perfectly good answer. I know the one who does. What am I going to do? best I can. I love you and I, I wish you peace. I wish you God's peace. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm serious. Really, I'm serious. I feel not for me, but for his glory so that you know he is God. The stressful time when I don't have the words or I'm stuttering like Moses, the Spirit comes into me and gives me the words to say to you, which is peace. Whatever I can possibly do, I will do my best to do. A friend's other half passed on last week. This is not for me. This is for God. This is for us. After church, immediately on the phone. Can you do a service for my... Yes. Don't you need to get with somebody? No. <laughs> How 
do you know it's going to be okay? I said, no. Because I'm asking him right now. <laughs> I'm not saying yes. He's saying yes. The words are coming from him. Verse 16, again, no man, when he has lighted a candle, covers it with a vessel, puts it under a bed, but sets it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come abroad. Are you scared to come to church because you've been bad? Join the club, man. <laughs> Are you scared of the Bible because of what it might do to change you? I understand that too. Psalm 22. Perfect psalm. God, you're pissing me off. It's in the Bible. Not those precise words, but boy, the emotion is there. Why are you so far from my roaring? Somebody bought the myth that he's far away on a throne somewhere. No, he's right here. Right here. Right here. He's in your guts. You can pray to him when you're on the toilet. Kathy asked me, when you talk to God, I said, I don't know that I necessarily talk to God. Not in words necessarily. Sometimes, but most of the time it's I can't describe it. Some might say I'm praying in tongues. That's very likely. I say I'm kind of just, I'm, we know each other. And I'm going, my brother, <laughs> Sid, whose birthday was last week, we finish each other's sentences quite often. That's how Kathy understood. Oh, these guys are going to be close when we first met because we were doing it all the time. It gets funny sometimes. But you know, and he knows, and I don't have to say the whole sentence if I'm using words at all. God is screwed up. I know. And I'm dealing. Yeah, I, and I want to do better. Please, please. Okay, it's that kind of a thing. For me, for you, it may be an entirely different story. You may have to have all the words written out before you start praying. I don't know. I'm not saying that it's going to be the same for everybody. Because God knows you. He knows what you need. He knows what kind of soil he's dealing with. He wants fruit from the seeds that have been planted. Take heed. Verse 18 Therefore, how you hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seems to have. Verse 14 again, here's something to keep in mind. That which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in, and I have it as it reads, an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. In other words, like I said, here's the time situation. Time is going to be involved. It takes time to build pressure. How long did it take for Egypt to let God's people go? Well, according to the movie, about two and a half hours. <laughs> according to mythology, it was a couple of weeks or a couple of months. This was a long time. A very long time. Patience. Patience. And Moses lost his patience quite a lot, but he got it back. See, being saved is having that good and honest heart where you go, 
God, I'm stupid. Teach me. Show me. Help me learn. Help me do what you want me to do. I want to be like Jesus says. <laughs> my mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. And not just to make yourself feel good. But he wants to show somebody, I am the Lord, your God. And you need me and I'm right here and I'm not on the throne and wherever. Here. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, as you came here in the body of your son Jesus and taught these things and people were scratching their heads, you were changing hearts. Not all of them. And yes, some fell away. Some didn't pick it up in the first place. But you had good and honest hearts like <laughs> our brother Peter who wanted so bad to understand you, he got so angry at you so much. You were so frustrating to him. And you told him three times and you were patient with him because you knew his heart. And eventually he got, he came around. He did some pretty incredible stuff. You empowered him to do it. We have to remember that. You can give us the power to do it. We're too filled with mythology to be able to clearly do it most of the time. Help us get clean of that and help us get tilled so that the seeds of your word can bring forth fruit from us. For the betterment of our fellow men and women and children and for a closer walk with thee. I ask this for each of your priests here today, and I ask it in, the name, in your name, in the name of your Son, Jesus, in the name of the Holy Spirit, who powers the whole thing up. Amen. Amen. We are going to do communion now. So. Love you. See you next week, I hope, if we get one. <laughs>